Session 4A Nibiru Tiamat Sumerian Myth To return to an examination of the symbolism of the Sumerian concept of Satan, i.e. ultimate evil, diametrically opposed to Marduk, who was held as the champion of ultimate good, according to the Sumerian Bible, the Book of Enki, Tiamat represented the prototypical planet Earth. Insofar as Marduk symbolized the alien planet Nibiru, the tale of the war in the heavens between Nibiru and Tiamat described, as detailed in the Book of Enki, a collision between the alien planet and our own Earth. According to the extensively descriptive account in the Sumerian Bible, Nibiru, Marduk, entered from deep space into our solar system in an opposite direction from that taken by the planetary revolutions in their orbits. This led to a head-on collision between Nibiru and Tiamat, which broke Tiamat into three pieces. One became the asteroid belt, one became our current planetary mass, and the third became Earth's moon. Supposedly, it is from Nibiru, the denizen of the deep, whose name means in Sumerian, planet of the crossing, that the Anunnaki alien EBEs originate. Thus, while life was forming on Earth and evolving for several million years following this catastrophic impact, Nibiru was, ostensibly, wandering in space. It also bore forth life. However, in its supposedly highly volcanic atmosphere, the cold-blooded reptilian sort of species evolved to achieve space-age sentience before Homo sapiens had walked the surface of the Earth. These reptilian aliens, then, according to Sumerian legend, came to Earth and cultivated the Homo sapiens species into a mold of their own form of civilization, instituting themselves as gods over men. Again, according to the legends from the Book of Enki, the close passage of Nibiru to Earth some 8,000 years ago, resulted in the deluge that swept over pre-Sumerian Mesopotamia. The legends of this event are also related in the Sumero-Akkadian Babylonian Epic of Gilgamesh. The flood tablet from this work describes the Anunnaki cowering over their inability to prevent the deluge and save humanity. In this legend, the only god who does not lament the fate of those who drowned was Enlil, with whom it is written that Utnapishtim, the Babylonian name of the biblical Noah, made the rainbow covenant that God should never destroy mankind by water anymore. So it is written in the Babylonian king's list, where Noah's name is Zayasudra, when the reign of the Nephilim ended, then the flood swept over. Session 4b The Fifth Sun The Mayan Calendar The complex system of cogs and gears that comprises the Mayan calendar measures days of a 13-span week, a 20-span month, and a 365-span year. It does this in such a way that the same number of day and week, month, and year will only line up once every 52 years, what the pre-conquest Mesoamericans called an Aztec century. To calibrate such a calendar, however, requires one to fix a start date, such that on any one specific given date, all the days of the week the month, and year glyphs would line in a starting position. Modern Mayanologists call this system the long count, but it is called in Mayan the Tzolkin, or in Aztec Nohatl, the Tonalamal. 
counting upward by Aztec centuries, we find that one Aztec century is equal to one Tzolkin, which in turn is equal to 18,980 kin days, or 13 katan, or 18-month lunar years of 20-day weenals, months. If one takes as one start date August 11th, negative 3114 year Pythagoras, then the current Tzolkin will end on midnight December 20th, positive 2012 year Pythagoras. It is calculated, according to the Mayan calendar, that each epoch, or sun, described in the Popol Vuh lasts one Tzolkin, or 13 Ketan. Thus, the date, negative 3114 year Pythagoras, corresponds in the Mayan cosmological narrative to the world flood that destroyed the wooden monkeys and gave birth to the modern corn people. Likewise, the date, positive 2012 year Pythagoras, will mark the end of the corn people's water sun and usher in the fifth sun on December 21st. So let us look at the celestial events that will occur in 2012 to determine if they may also have occurred in a similar conjunction in negative 3114 year Pythagoras. In 2012 we can accurately predict two events of interplanetary and cosmic significance occurring in the heavens above our heads. The first involves the alignment of the Sun, the Earth, and the core of the Milky Way galaxy. Over the millennia, the orbital plane of the planets around the Sun wobbles around like a loose record. On the very day of the 21st of December, positive 2012, the Sun will align from the position of Earth in exact front of the Milky Way's core. The Milky Way's core is in the tropic constellation, Sagittarius. It has only been since around positive 1999 that the Hubble Space Telescope has been able to peer deep enough into the core of our own galaxy to confirm the existence there not only of cosmogenesis, the birth of new stars, but the existence of a black hole. The exact effects of this alignment have not yet been seen. However, it seems probable that it will provide a significant opportunity for studying the deepest reaches of the cosmos with Hubble, the International Space Station, and other satellites. However, it can be said with at least absolute certainty that this alignment of the Sun and galactic core will be visible only during the day and due to Earth's 23.5 degree angle of inclination from the planetary orbital plane only from the northern hemisphere. The second event of cosmic significance will be visible exactly 180 degrees opposite from the alignment of the Sun with galactic core. From the southern hemisphere, by night, will approach the asteroid Apophis. Apophis will have just passed Earth's position in its orbit and will be out ahead of Earth leading towards its elliptical orbit carrying it away from our planet until its next approach in 2029 when by some scientists calculations it will catch up with us again and collide with us from behind. On December 21, 2012 Apophis will be exactly 0.1 astronomical unit AU distance from the planet Earth, about 39 times the distance between Earth and our moon.